Got a few new pickups here. Got uh, a couple N64 games, a couple of Super Famicom games. Uh, let's see, I guess we'll start right here at the top. This is kind of an interesting one. Um, Wonder Kitchen is what I know this one as. Uh, it's a full Japanese name for it. But uh, kind of a precursor to games like Cooking Mama, I guess you'd say. Uh, this one's kind of unique, was uh, not ever available for sale. It was um, something that was like a promotional item. This is a, uh, it's advertising a, a brand of mayonnaise basically, right? So the recipes are always like finished off with their mayonnaise or something like that. Uh, with some, some kind of secret sauce. Um, so anyways, uh, you got this game by saving a bunch of box tops and mailing them in or something like that. So it's like kind of cool in that regard. Uh, it is a another Super Nintendo uh, mouse compatible game. Uh, so that's how I discovered it. I was looking at a list of those, uh, seeing if there's anything I wanted to add to the physical collection. And uh, yeah, this one seemed cool enough, uh, especially the fact that it wasn't a retail game. Kind of uh, was interesting to me. Um, the complete box copy was kind of expensive for that reason, again, because it wasn't a retail game ever. Um, and even loose cartridge, loose cartridges of this typically go for like uh, around seems to be like forty bucks or so at the moment. I was able to get this one as for pretty cheap as part of the package, and it's not in the best shape aesthetically, um, but it's not broken in any way or anything. I haven't tested it yet, but I assume it's working as advertised. Um, anyways, so that was kind of cool. Looking forward to kind of checking that one out and uh, having it in the physical collection for the Super Nintendo Mouse games. Uh, this one is a puzzle game, Susume, uh, Puzzle, Tyson, Drama, Dama, something like that, I don't know. Anyways, it looks kind of cool, uh, it looks kind of similar to Puyo Puyo and how it's played, but had some kind of interesting, cool mechanics, so you might want to check that one out. Um, yeah, so kind of, same thing, just got the, the cartridge version of that. Uh, so it's just another Japanese N64 game I didn't have that looked fun and easy to play you know don't need any japanese knowledge requirement this one looks like it's in pretty nice shape and uh yeah so looking forward to checking that one out as well just cartridge only on that one this one was cheap so i got the box as well this one's battle phoenix 64 uh b damon battle phoenix and it says that that b uh the the marble game that's really popular in Japan is based off of that too. This guy, this guy doing the thing there. It's like a shooting little marble shooter. So uh, there was a Bomberman spin off of this and this is just like a standalone, a bunch of, it's like multiplayer mini games. So it looks like kind of a fun, uh, they're all like based off of like shooting some kind of marble from your belly there, like the toys do, I guess. So, uh, but anyways, look like, look pretty fun. So pick this one up. Uh, I got this for like 15 bucks, complete in box as part of this, this package here. So pretty good deal. And this is, uh, Mina no Tamagotchi world, something like that. For sure. The Tamagotchi world part is right. But, uh, yeah. So this is actually a, a precursor to a Mario party. It's uh, made by Hudson soft the year, the year prior, uh, to the release of Mario party. You can kind of see in the gameplay, it is like a board game. It has some mini games so like that. You can see how it is like a, a proto to that. So uh, again, it was a cheap game and it looks maybe kind of mildly fun. Uh, would be again, not, don't need to know too much Japanese to play through. It's mostly like symbols and stuff made for like little kids. So um, yeah. Anyways, seemed kind of cool. And let's see here. Last but not least, this is a uh, Secret of Mana. Or Seiken Densetsu 2. Again, probably not pronouncing that right, but that's the Japanese name. So I just started playing this game recently. I also got the uh, US release, the physical copy of that, and started playing through it recently. So I got this one just to, to match it, to have a nice... I like to do a, uh, a little now playing display above my TV for the game I'm playing. and uh, So japanese box uh box games are really nice for that because they're a lot cheaper and oftentimes the artwork is kind of prettier anyways which is certainly the case for this one um so yeah happy to add these to the collection and uh yeah that's it that's it for now that's that's the that's the update i got so
So we're kind of out of space on the electronics desk here, so we'll do lovely kitchen counter unboxing. We've got a couple pretty cool items I've been waiting for a while on here. Uh, get started right off the top. This is just a simple uh, cart extension for Super Nintendo. I bought this with the intention of uh, being able to play US games on a Super Famicom without having to cut the, the shell or anything like that. I've seen a couple of these that have been put into a, into a uh, Super Famicom cartridge to make it like, you know, a little uh, more aesthetically pleasing. And just have this part sticking out of the top out of like a you know, cartridge you cut in half or something. Um, I may or may not do that, but I just wanted to get this because it was a pretty good price. And um, the options for that are kind of few and far between. Um, any of the, re the retro ones that were made back in the day are very expensive now. So anyways, got that. And then here is a big pile of Everdrives. I'm late to the party on this, I realize. I uh, had the uh, purest collector attitude for a while where I didn't even want to get them. I just wanted to get all the games I wanted to play and the original cartridges. And, eh, you know, that kind of went by the wayside. And I've collected a lot of cartridges and I probably will still do it, keep doing that. But um, it made sense to go ahead and get these, and especially now that... Um, you got kind of the bugs worked out of them, and I feel like we are we have some good iterations of them now. So, uh, might even get the N64 one, despite having all the, pretty much all the games for that physically I'd ever want to play. You know, complete US collection, and then pretty much all the Japanese ones I'd want to play. But I'm probably still going to go ahead and get it for some of the mods and homebrew kind of stuff, because it, it did, I've seen some of that stuff recently look pretty cool. So, anyway, let's see what's on the top one here. I assume this is one of the Game Boy ones. Yeah, there we go. Got the Game Boy Advance Everdrive. It's a lovely little case. And let's see, I guess this one will be a little sticker seal on that. This will be. Okay, I guess the Game Boy Everdrive doesn't come with its own case. That's fine. It's probably going to live. Uh... I'm not sure where that's going to live. But alright. So there's the Game Boy and Game Boy Advance one. One here. This is the Famicom one. The Super Drive or uh, Overdrive M3. I like these cases quite a bit. Definitely did nice things with that. Yeah, looking forward to checking these out for sure. Uh, now the Famicom, there's a lot of games. The Famicom and the Super Famicom, uh, yeah, and the uh, Super Nintendo, or whatever, uh, and the and the EverDrive one here, which is what's what's next, the uh, uh, Mega Drive, one, excuse me, Mega Drive EverDrive. Yeah, these are all nicely packaged. I like these a lot. Um, I did go ahead and get the top of the line for everything. Um, could have spent quite a bit less, uh, but especially this one. Uh, this one can do uh, Sega CD, uh, Sega CD games without having to have the console or the or the the disc themselves, obviously. So that was that was a big selling point for me is that that o that opened up a whole other game library basically by getting this, and that that is hardware I'm definitely never gonna get. Like I'm there's no way am I ever gonna get deal with having a Sega CD and trying to get one of those things working. So, um, yeah. So that'll be, that'll, that's worth, because there are some cool Sega CD games I've seen that I'm like, yeah, well, there's one I'm never going to get to play, but I never thought they would come out with something uh, like that, where you could be able to play it from a, from, a, from a flash card. So, and last but not least, I did get the, the FX Pack, the FX Pack Pro, which is in the top of the line Super Nintendo one, you can do FX games, and uh, I think this one can also do... Um, yeah, it says it's got Super Game Boy Core, um, so I believe it does have, um, what's, what's some, you can do some Satellaview and other things, like, again, uh, peripheral add-on games, uh, through this as well. So, yeah, um, yeah, so that's just kind of an overview for that for now. I'm super stoked to, uh, get into these and start figuring them out, and I'm sure there'll be plenty of videos coming up, so thanks for watching for now. ついに登場任天堂 64、64で発見タモッチ。みんなでタモッチ。